Aloha everyone and welcome back to my part two of my July 1st, 2022 health update. Thank you for sticking around and stay tuned here. I appreciate that. All right, so to continue on with my story, I'm going to talk a little bit about the chronological order of my diagnosis for those of you that may or may not be familiar with that. Um, initially, it was October 2012 that I first got diagnosed with DCIS stage zero breast cancer on the left breast. At that time, because it was stage zero, I opted to have a mastectomy on the left side, and then I got the implants. I did not need radiation or chemotherapy due to the fact that it was stage zero. I also had a brain tumor at that time, and I got the gamma knife radiation, so they took care of that right away. Um, now, uh, I was good with that for about five years, and Really, it was only a few months of being, I guess, in remission, you would say, that it became January 2017 when I had that mass on my neck, that huge lump, after crossing the finish line from the marathon. And um, I just assumed that, well, I'm always sick after the marathon. It's really rough on your body. I get a cold and I finish your medal. It's normal. <laughs> What's this crazy rash? It hurts. <coughs> and, <clears throat> excuse me, when I went to the ER... Lo and behold, you have metastatic stage 4 breast cancer and on the other side. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, been dealing with that. Went right in. Uh, Dr. Paul Lai is amazing. He targeted the area of my whole body immediately with Taxotere, blasting it right out of the gate. He was very aggressive with it because it's an aggressive cancer. And he gave me Taxotere, which is horrible. I lost all my hair, I was bald, I was sick. On the fourth and fifth day, I couldn't even move to get up to go to the bathroom, it was awful. Those of you who are on Taxotere know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, I keep you all in my prayers because it's awful. I don't wish it for anybody. I, <clears throat> As strong of a person as I am and consider myself to be, I considered, I, I mean, I remember it going through my head thinking that, oh, after about the third round, I remember thinking, oh, if it's going to be like this, I don't know if I can do this or I want to do this anymore. And <clears throat> I really started to go downhill emotionally, mentally, physically, everything. And I can't remember who it was, but someone like gave me a pep talk and said, you know, hold on, fight it. What are you doing? That's not like you. Just fight. And I've always been grateful. I don't remember who told me that, but I've always been grateful for it because I did. And then I got mad and I said, you know what? You're right. Okay, I'm sick, but you know what? I'm strong. I can take a lot of abuse. I'm, I'm just going to deal with this and fight it. And God willing, I made it through. I only had a few more rounds left. And amen, I did it. Then my second set of medication was... Um, so the Taxotere was 100% straight chemo. My second set of meds was half chemotherapy and half monoclonal antibody therapy to specifically target the cancer cells. <coughs> And that was, <clears throat> excuse me, Herceptin and Progena. So I had that for, I think, about two years. I had that until it quit working. And then, if you remember a while back, I grew the grapefruit-sized tumor. I was calling it a grapefruit. This wasn't working anymore if I'm growing a grapefruit. So had to switch to what I'm on now, the Cadzilla, which, and I also have bone infusion, Zometa, every 28 days. But this Cadzilla I take every 21 days, and I've been getting infused with it for, here's my port, I've been getting infused with it for almost three years now. So um, now that I'm having some problems with my lungs, that's one of the main complications. There's other things such as, I don't know if you can see it, my fingernails are completely split, and they have, they just bend, I mean like this, like a piece of paper, they split all the way down. They have striations. I have neuralgia, pain, and cramping in my feet, and it's hard to. When I play the guitar, I can't feel my hands so well. Uh, I get tingly and numbness sometimes in my feet and hands. It's, uh, those of you who are experiencing Kedzilla again can relate to what I'm saying. So I hope you don't have those side effects. I always consider myself to be blessed and lucky that a lot of people in my cancer support group have it way, way, way worse than me to the point where the one girl was even getting nauseous over it. And 
I've been like really sick, not even able to get off the couch. So I thought, hey, okay, if my fingernails are splitting and I can't really feel my hand and uh, is that the worst thing that's going to happen? Okay, my nose bleeds a lot, but uh, yeah, it's not ideal. It's not great, but I can do it. That's what I'm saying. But, you know, now this lung thing, this pneumocystis, uh, I'm scared if I have to not get the kids so anymore. They keep telling me there's one or two more tricks up their sleeve. But I'm fearful because eventually I'm going to exhaust all the medicines and then what? Then I guess you just die because there's no more medicine to, to get. I will have gone through all of them unless I guess I could do a clinical trial and be a guinea pig, I guess. But <clears throat> it's not a guarantee. And I'm just trying to have faith. And before I asked God for stronger faith, and he gave me the grapefruit-sized tumor. And then um, I said... I was worried for a few days, and then I said, I'm leaving it up to you, God. And he got me through it, and it went away, and it's gone. And then I thought, wow, he did exactly what I asked. I prayed for a stronger faith, and he gave me a grapefruit. <laughs> now my tumors are back to the millimeter size, which that's better than centimeters, okay? Uh, the, I'm not really excited about the my recent scans. Everything I have has not grown increased in size or I haven't grown anything new but the only thing that has increased I'm not excited about it is my brain tumor it's in my left cerebellum and it's I, I can't remember I think they told me it was eight millimeters so it's not huge but it's discerning because for about two two and a half years it's been a, f a small flat scar like literally like one millimeter now it's eight Oh, okay, and, and then I'm having to miss a couple rounds of chemo. Oh, okay, so today when I was in there getting turned away, they said they were going to ask the neurosurgeon who did my gamma knife surgery operation about possibly giving radiation, just zapping the tumor with another, you know, sending a, a beam of <laughs> radiation to my head. <laughs> But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you can only get so many, much radiation, so we'll see what they say. i got to wait and see. But anyway, that might potentially be the plan. Uh, and then um, I also have tumors pretty much in my contained in my entire spine, my hips, my pelvis, my iliac crests, uh, my left lung, and my right breast, and then this brain tumor. And then my arms and legs are fine. There isn't anything there, knock on wood, but... Uh, when I read it in print, when I read the results, it's still a little bit upsetting because I think, wow, there's a lot going on in there. <laughs> and again, it is, that's why it's called metastatic. It's metastasized. I get it. But it's still not really fun to read your own report. And yeah. anyway, through the grace of God, I'm still here. I know he's going to get me through all this. He always does. I'm very lucky and blessed. Uh, I don't have any extra pericardial fluid right now they were, they were worried about potential fluid in my lungs I don't have that I don't have atelectasis you know infiltrates I don't have that pleural infiltrates um, when I had my uh, I think 350 cc's of pericardial fluid at one point and they had to do that emergency surgery and drain that that was scary that could have killed me and it didn't again thank you God uh, so I don't have any of those things right now my heart's holding out knock on wood Thanks to the metropolol, and I have regular EKGs every three or four months, and so far so good. Uh, <clears throat> I um, recently started levothyroxine again because my thyroid apparently is low again, and uh, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I've been trying to have to. It's tricky with all these medicines now because I need to take that on an empty stomach. So usually when I get up to go to the bathroom super early, I take the levo. Then I go back to bed. Then I set my alarm for 6 a.m. to take the antibiotic. And now my prednisone, I'll add to that tomorrow. Because that apparently gives you insomnia, I'm told. So I need to take that in the morning. So today I confirmed I'm able to have both of those with the antibiotic and the prednisone together in the morning. Then I'll go back to bed. Then when I get up, I'll take my Operation Stay Alive meds, which are those 25 or so supplements that I take. Um... I do have a video about my Operation Stay Alive, I call it. I'm planning to make an updated video about it because I think it's an important thing to cover for people with cancer. I recently found out that fennel is another cancer killer. 
and um, I just love to share the information about supplements and plants and herbs that supposedly kill cancer cells because really all we have to lose is a little bit of money and I, the point I wanted to make about it is sometimes I fall off the wagon and I think oh I don't want to take 25 pills oh, I already have cancer pills and all these other things I have to take and, and it's expensive so I kind of instead of taking all 25 of them I'll take out one or two here and there and then lo and behold there's the tumor again this is the third time in a row. Count it. Three. One, two, three. Third time, I taper down on Operation Stay Alive, and I don't take all my supplements, and I grow a tumor. It's the brain tumor. It's the grapefruit. And then I had another one down here. As soon as I start taking them again, bam, it's gone. Understandably, it's all God. He can heal blind people and give them sight, and I know it's all Him, but... He made these supplements for us to take. I need to spend a little bit of money and take them because when I take them, it's gone. When I don't take them, I grow something. So you may believe it. You may not believe it. Do what you want with the information. I'm not trying to convert anybody. Think what you want to think. I'm just sharing my story. It worked for me. I believe it. And even today, the APRN said, wow, you're not going to have three coincidences like that. I think this stuff really does work. You bet it works. Operation Stay Alive. Since I got the results of these scans, I've been back on everything again. FYI. So stand, stand by for uh, an updated video about Operation Stay Alive because it has more to do with just the supplements. It's also a proper state of mind and, and uh, <clears throat> body exercise and a whole bunch of things. So keeping your stress level down. Um, I'll get into that on another video, but just wanted to mention that it's important. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, okay, so I did get a VIX inhaler, a steamer that, <laughs> I don't know if it's working all that well. I'm not giving it a rave review or anything, but it's nice to put the mentholiptus in there and sit, set it up next to my bed and it makes the hot steam. It wasn't producing a lot of steam. It did say if it's not steaming, you can add some table salt to it. I mean, it helped it a little bit, but I'm still coughing, like, out of control if I try to lay flat. The secret is keeping myself propped up, and even though it's hard to sleep that way, until I can get rid of this and <clears throat> get my oxygen saturation back up to normal, <coughs> there's no choice in the matter. I'm just going to do my best with it. It is what it is. And um, it's better than nothing, I guess. Uh, let me see what else. I think I covered everything I wanted to. I don't want the video to go so long again. I'm going to sign off. But um, let me just once again thank everybody for watching and let everyone know that you're loved, you're important. Just stay positive, have faith, say your prayers, just read up on information come join our cancer support group if you need a little bit of friendly help and we don't by the way just one more note about that real quick we don't just talk about cancer and of course all of us in the group have cancer it's a support group for cancer survivors but we also talk about our everyday life uh, someone's getting ready to go to a wedding uh, vacation plans family things issues good and bad I mean, we become close personal friends and I'll tell you, I couldn't live without this group. It's a wonderful group of people. The support is amazing. And sometimes you just really need someone to talk to. And we all understand what each other are going through because we're all in the same boat. And I, I personally find a lot of comfort in that versus talking to someone who doesn't know. who can really relate and give me a lot of good advice. So please, um, again, I want to invite all of you, if you need to, join my cancer support group, please reach out. And uh, thank you again for watching. God bless all of you. Wonderful. I appreciate the support. And have a great day. Aloha. Stay positive. You got this. Keep fighting. Aloha.